Hi, I'm Dan Winkler from Gun Show, and uh, this is the space we're going to be performing at tonight. It's a creative artist's laboratory. Hey, it's Beth from Stockholm Syndrome. Come on in. It starts in like 15 minutes. That's a house manager. Yeah, 15 minutes. And in here, this, this is where we're going to perform. It has, as you can see, three rows of track lighting. But I thought maybe, you know, he plays the comic on the show. Oh, this is oh, the, like the this. super well, space know, we get hey, for Rob's last show. If there's, and, if we need to, not, okay. and you got the king and queen thrones right in front. <laughs> and uh, if there's not enough, there's like a stereo back there and a fan. Hey, what is the other screen like that out? Is it, are, are we missing out on something cooler? Oh, yeah. Oh. It's a yeah. All right, I have a host coming also, a stand up who was uh, originally slated for the other space. Where's Ryan? Yeah. yeah. Where is where is that mobile? Probably douching. Uh, Seriously, man. guys. <laughs> nice. I'm being judgmental. I'm too judgmental. It's awesome that people rent this space. I think it's great. Really? What do you care? No, really. You're out of here, dude. You don't have to be nice. I shouldn't about judge. This. I some of my best shows were in my basement. Welcome to everyone's. Best friend in third grade's basement. <laughs> <laughs> this will soon all be your repast generous. We're gonna have Totino's pizza rolls after the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, uh, so we need a suggestion to spark a memory of Rob's. A real one. I'll give you a real memory. Monopoly. 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 Um, I remember in uh, fourth grade in Potomac, Maryland, my family would, right around Christmas time, we, I'm Jewish, but we would obviously get off for the Christmas holidays. So we had to find things to do for that time that I was home. So we would play board games. And although we did play Monopoly a little bit, and we never finished a game, my mom used to love to do this puzzle that had a, an artist's drawing of people skiing, but it was, it was almost like a cartoon. And the people skiing were like, it was this huge tableau of like people bumping into each other, people making out. And as I remember, there were, there were a couple of like topless ski bunnies this big in, in, the, uh, in the public center. That's funny, I love those puzzles. My, uh, oh, what I was going to say, was, you, was that the only puzzle that your family had? Just the one puzzle that you Every ever finished? Every year. Um, brought it out. My mom had another one that she loved. And when I was in high school, I wasn't there when she put it together, but I was there when, after she finished it, she put glue on the bottom of it <laughs> and put it on poster board. And it's been in our basement slowly, piece by piece, uh, pieces of it are coming off, but it's in our den. And so sometimes when you go down, actually, I think my dad finally threw it out, but now sometimes when you go down into my den, you'll still find little pieces of the puzzle. What, what do you guys normally do in your den? What was the primary task of the den? Like, what uh, I would go down there and look at all the books that my parents, I guess, used to read, and I would wish that instead of reading, I could watch television. <laughs> it does. Yeah, and I've, I know I've told you guys this, but I was not allowed to watch television Monday through Friday until after school on Friday, so I could watch Saturday and Sunday, but the big caveat was, again, I'm Jewish. So I had to go to Saturday morning Hebrew school, so I missed all the Saturday morning cartoons. Well, so who's your teacher at Hebrew school? Uh, How about him a little bit? Her. Or her. 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 Mrs. Lerner. I don't know from you. Har Shalom, Har Shalom uh, Synagogue had somehow recruited all these really stone-hearted Israeli women to teach <laughs> skills to Jewish kids from the Maryland suburbs. So, so you know, like, these people had probably fought in the Israeli army you know, or war or something like that, and they, they were just very stern. And Mrs. Lerner, she had dyed fiery red hair, and she was this older Israeli woman, and sort of saggy skin and cheeks. She had clearly been out in the sun way too much. And, uh, probably fighting in the army. Probably fighting in the army. And uh, so that was that was probably my most outstanding Hebrew school teacher. Did you ever get in, like, in trouble in Hebrew school? Like Yes. I, um, I remember the end of class one day, third grade, and I, I don't know why I remember this detail, but I was wearing 
those camper shorts that they used to, little boys used to wear these the with all the pockets and then there was a little keychain on it too that dangle on the outside. Um, and I used to always want to put keys on there, but my mom wouldn't let me. Anyway, I remember I was wearing that and I was all like decked out in, in like accessories and I had a watch. I had my first face watch and I changed the time on the face watch to make it 45 minutes ahead in time of when it actually was and I I was like joking and I said to her oh look look it's time for us to leave it's 615 it's time for us to go and she let us all go <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, didn't, I, didn't think, I didn't put together that my joke had actually made her release us early and so I remember walking down the hall and she came out and yelled so loud <laughs> and so I had to like, go back inside and I got a laugh um, that, more or less, I was a pretty good student. I especially liked, Hebrew school was set up into two segments. There was Hebrew language, um, which is very valuable now in my life. And, and then there was, uh, like, the cultural, traditional teaching that they would also provide. And that was usually taught by a very kind-hearted American woman. And I remember, I remember in, I think it was fifth grade, yeah, they never fought in the war. In the fifth grade, they had a whole se section called Life Cycles. And it was like you would, in this cartoon, cartoonist rendering of all of the Jewish life cycles, starting from birth and circumcision all the way to death. And I remember really enjoying things. So. Did you ever have to put together the puzzle? Was it like a cartoon kind of thing? <laughs> no, 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 no. Did you ever like get in trouble at home? Like, were you ever grounded or like disciplined by your parents? Yes. I, in eighth grade, I was hanging out with some friends, Adam Singer, and we were at Lisa Diorio's house. And Lisa Diorio's parents weren't home. And this was, maybe this was in eighth grade. And somebody had, I thought I said seventh, sorry. And uh, somehow Lisa Diorio had a BB gun. So as the guy the gas, you know, eighth graders with BB guns is not a good combination. And so we were just firing the BB gun off. And apparently, I don't think it was when I was firing it, um, but Adam, I guess, had fired it in the direction of somebody's car and it shattered the window. Well, the woman who lived in that house, the woman who lived in that house, called up, somehow found out, I don't know, somehow got in touch with my parents. And even though I maintain to this day that I did not fire the BB gun in that direction, uh, I was grounded, which meant no TV and no friends, for a month and a half. Oh. And my parents enforced grounding. Like, getting older, I would find out that people in high school and college would say, oh, my parents had grounded me, but like two days later, I was still watching television again. And <laughs> I could not do any of that, so I resented not being trusted, and I also resented the enforcement that my parents enforced. Crystal, you've got to come and see the puzzle we worked on. Uh, oh. We did this one last Christmas. Um, that is fantastic. Isn't it gorgeous? <laughs> I hesitated. <laughs> I hesitated to glue it together, but I, I thought is, it was priceless. This is what we're working on now. Never. This is, it's, it's like a piece of art. I know. You I know. made that? Well, not just me, the whole family. Oh, I know. It's a puzzle, but... <laughs> my family has this puzzle, and it is... I, my, I almost killed my husband with it. I think it's can't the snow caps. The snow caps will kill you. It's, it's like all you're, white. You're drowning in water. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Oh my god. I burned it. I burned it. I never want to see it again. But now to see it here, it's like, oh my god, my life is like, it's like a, thank you. Well, thank you. after we finished it, you were the first person I thought of, and I just That's glued so it together and hung it up, and here's our museum. God, <laughs> I'm sorry, we, we did this in one. Well, really, two days of the Christmas break. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good at puzzles. I don't want to brag, but you know. Or I must have been missing some pieces or something. Um, no, I'm pretty sure this, you know, this is a pretty good quality puzzle. I can only leave pieces without it. And there's a number on the uh, box you can call if you're missing a piece. So. <laughs> 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 All right, you get back in your chair. You get back in your chair. We are not done for another ten minutes or so. 
All right, today's lesson is going to be about pain. I want to get back to the life cycles. I am right-handed. It took me ten years to learn to write pain with my left hand. Oh, God. What happened here? Right hand. Well, I was... Saving 50 men from a grenade. I grabbed the grenade with my bare hand and shoved it into a barrel. A barrel of gasoline. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> yes, Ezekiel. Michael. <laughs> what war was this? No one's even fighting nowadays. We were fighting over four square feet of land! <laughs> Gravel and fence! Is this real war? Or just... Real war! There's no such thing as fake war! Fifty people were condensed into four square feet of land and fence! That gravel was holy land! Stand up! I'm sorry I'm late. Um, we had a car accident and I think my dad is dead! Oh no! This is horrible! I told him that Class dismissed! Class dismissed! This is terrible! Well, that's uh, that's quite a quite a drawing you did. Um, Beetle Bailey uh, giving his kid a circumcision. <laughs> it's, uh, interesting. I'm, I'm trying to educate in in things that uh, people will laugh at. You know, understand? Because the beetle, he's like a, he's a shirker worker. And, and a moil is someone that's hard to understand. Beetle is someone easy to understand because you understand his, his laziness. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of with you, I'm sort of with you. But Sarge is wearing a yarmulke. A little artistic license. <laughs> but the point is, uh, I think that this could, uh, this could do a lot of... You've of heaved the... up Beetle Bailey. <laughs> do a lot of good for the congregation, that's what I'm saying. But, but there's a lot of subscribers to the newspaper aside from the Jewish people at the synagogue. Well, I just want to aim it at it, you know, the back of the paper. Nobody there's... cares about it anymore. I want a part that people care about. My people care about. I've got that, uh... Hagar the Horrible with the bar mitzvah that you asked for. <laughs> Who's putting out memos that I'm asking for? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just a nice little Sunday drive. <sighs> <sighs> The kids. <laughs> They're behind the bush and they saw them go behind the shrub. What kind of high power rifle do they have? <laughs> oh my god, there's an exit wound. It's like there's an exit wound on the side of my face. An exit wound? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the window shattered. <laughs> hey, you kids were just fleeing off! Yeah. We're under attack! <laughs> oh, he flooded the engine! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Listen, enough's enough! You guys killed my friend! And this isn't cool anymore! This isn't funny! This isn't a game! He's Judy. dead! Shoot him! Oh my god! <laughs> Get back here! This game of Monopoly is not over! <laughs> it's not over! I don't want to play Monopoly anymore! I... No, I only have ten dollars. <laughs> but it's not over until I'm bankrupt. And then I can still mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Phil? Is the land on Park Avenue again? <laughs> yes! Oh, well, let me go count my money. I'm up to like four hundred dollars, something ridiculous like that. I lost count. <laughs> Fuck you, Barry! <laughs> <laughs> this game is not over! Uh, I made a comeback! Remember in 98, I made a comeback! I only had a dollar! During the blizzard when only Jen was there? Come on! Can you I, saw the pictures! I think it's... 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 I think it's...
Oh, are you not listening to me? <laughs> this game is not over. I'm just really tired. You're never going to get the top hat. I've had the top hat for four years. You're never going to win. You can't pick your own piece. I'm sorry. You might as well Honey, you suck, suck at board games. <laughs> Oh. Can I say that to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. I just want a nice holiday. Spitfire, you got this. I like your holiday. <laughs> 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 you guys have made problems on the Friends. <laughs> you don't need properties and hotels. You have this. <laughs> I can't make that go around the board, you whore! <laughs> <laughs> you goddammit! <know, damn> <laughs> now how much do I have to pay to get out of jail? Oh, you landed in jail. Fuck you! <laughs> and that's why I think it would be really good if we never let the children watch TV ever. <laughs> that's how I feel. Well, Davis, you've made some uh, really cogent points. Uh, clearly, you've researched the matter, but there's one thing I'm going to have to take issue with. The kids have got to watch Family Feud. <laughs> I mean, it's a show about families working together, and I don't really know how to illustrate that any better. <laughs> no. Richard Dawson is so sexy. I don't want those overt messages getting through to our kids. Look, you know, we'll have them watch Hogan's Heroes. They'll see a whole other side of Richard Dawson. It's just real men in that. You know? It's no problem. You're talking about two shows. There's a lot of science I wanted to teach them. There's always time for science. I mean, the statistical analysis of Family Feud. I mean, that's wonderful in entree into the world of statistics. You're right. It's all percentages. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hundred people survey. It's <laughs> on the board. If 15 out of 100 answer, you know... Shelly Long. Exactly. <laughs> what percent is that? And you've just taught a lesson, and they just enjoy family feud. God. Wait, wait, wait. We might be onto something. I mean, if family feud teaches math, what does uh, different strokes teach? <laughs> well, uh, other than obviously racial tolerance. Sociology! <laughs> right! I mean, just the song in and of itself. They've got nothing but their genes. <laughs> I had a whole genetic. Oh my god! There's a lot going on in that show. I was gonna, I was gonna teach the DNA strand, but it's really all moot. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm just coming up with this right now, too. I, I assure you, I didn't enter into this. We're just spitballing. Oh my god, great lesson plans for our kids. There's a lot of stuff we can do. I mean, that's the whole thing. I just don't think we can throw the baby out with the bathwater. The TV thing. I was so sure that TV was evil, just all around evil. <laughs> and I was pretty sure I agreed with you, but for Family Feud. Glad <laughs> <laughs> we had this talk. I wish there was some show that would teach our kids about communicating. The Dating Game! <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Well, I'm just gonna take this piece and put it away in a drawer. I don't think maybe you should. Uh, we should finish that part of the puzzle. <laughs> no. But but now it's just there's just a hole where those two well four pa two pairs of skis are. Uh, yeah, there are just pairs of skis in that spot. We can just imagine. We can picture it. <laughs> I imagine two men having sex. <laughs> well, that's just strange, honey, because there's just four skis there. I mean, it's it's a skiing landscape. Look, oh look, there's a young man who's eating yellow snow. See, isn't that isn't that offensive? But that's offensive. That's strange. Four skis laid in a row. That's nothing. I can't get the image of two skiers having anal sex. There's no <laughs> anal sex in this, in this puzzle. Uh, there's, it's nowhere on here. If you look around, look, there's a nice... All these people are over in the gazebo. They're playing a brass band with skis. That's crazy. <laughs> Didn't you tell me that that art and puzzles are supposed mm -hmm. to inspire creativity? Absolutely. And, and we have a Van Gogh down here is cutting off his own ear with a ski. That's crazy. <laughs> See? <laughs> Nothing crazy happening in that empty spot. We should just really forget about it. I can't get this image out of my head, Dad. Like, it reminds me of the time that I walked in with you and your friend Bruce. 
And I figured you get it out, you guys scurried around real fast and shut off the lights and then, you know, covered yourselves up with the sheets. But I couldn't help but imagine, I bet you they're having anal sex in there. But honey, you know that sex is just a, a big hug in the first place, okay? <laughs> and if your daddy and I are having a big hug in the, in the bedroom, you know that it's not a good idea to be knocking or coming in, okay? And along the same lines, if there's a big hug happening in a puzzle, maybe you shouldn't open that door either. <laughs> <laughs> I brought in some latkes, I thought, you know, after a day with those kids. Oh, Maryland. <laughs> Help yourselves. Not getting the Hebrew language at all. I at think, all. I think they're getting dumber every year. You know what's crazy to me is they act like they're never going to have a use for it later. And it's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things you learn that you forget. So learn it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, someone the other day was comparing it to geometry. They're like, now that's one, you know, you really need to know. You might need that later in life. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I didn't learn it. Look where I am. Ex very good point. I You've wish I would have been there. You've got a very beautiful home. Thank you. <laughs> it's too bad we could never uh, figure out how to get that couch in through the door, though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's I can still go in through the back door. <laughs> Teacher's lounge is crowded today. <laughs> Here comes the Hebrew hammer. <laughs> I dug my head deep into the cavity of a man's skull and felt just like those macaroni noodles. Enjoy! Enjoy the macaroni noodles! They're hot because I'm not going to argue. Enjoy the macaroni noodles. Smoking still allowed in the smoking room? It's the state law that it's not, but I certainly don't mind. I don't think any of us are going to. You just go ahead and make your own rules, Israel. <laughs> I'm tired. Don't you know she I'm sick of Tina? I am drawing a line in the sand. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to draw a line closer to you. <laughs> and I'm pushing us around. You left your brain in the desert. <laughs> To the to the uh, to the other house. Uh, yeah, mom. No, 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 no. Her parents are over. Yeah, it's no problem. Okay, well, I don't need to talk to them. Just I trust you. Okay. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Hey, hey, mom. Yeah. Uh, is it the blue wire or the red wire on plastic explosives? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a hint to you that maybe st they weren't really home? Maybe I'm Why was he working on plastic explosives? <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought it was like a board game or something. We have that board game with plastic explosives downstairs, but I thought we were the only family that had it. <laughs> Did he take it over there? <laughs> oh. You're not the This is, uh, out of everything else in this gallery, I, 
I can't get over this. I am, I am blushing. You have no idea. People made fun of me for years for my puzzles. And I said, you know, I know art when I see it. And, um, <laughs> it really captured the essence. Bink! <laughs> um, Hold on, I've got some spray mount in my bag. Let me just I'm gonna try and pretend that didn't happen. So yeah. don't let that ruin the no, experience no. happens. I won't. Sometimes. And so as I was saying, the way you've really captured uh, the beach and what people do with the beach and, the person peel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Why will someone come up to him and he said that in here? <laughs> Clearly in the name, A D H E. This <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a little. This is very embarrassing. I've waited all my life to have an art critic come and look at one of my puzzles, and now it's falling off the wall because we can't. We can put a man on the moon, but we can't put a jigsaw puzzle on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so proud to, to be awarding your son this award for his wonderful work on the science of television and all of the wonders that is unlocked for the rest of the school children around the world. Yeah. <laughs> he was able to do with a cathode ray tube. It's just... Not just that, Dad. I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to ruin the surprise. I have 500 tapes of Family Feud. I'd have been showing the school daily. That's what I'm talking about. He's reinvented mathematics. Education worldwide. And not just Richard Dawson's years of Family Feud. Louis Anderson's <laughs> <laughs> just, just levels and levels. He just, oh, I'm getting dizzy thinking about it. Time Magazine called. They said they took a survey. 57% <laughs> of most schools are going to adopt a new plan. My God, I'm so proud of you. If your real mother were alive, she'd be proud of how hard you pushed. Bitch, I am alive. <laughs> 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 Get that out of here. This is my day. <laughs> Oh, what a great fantasy. If only I could actually watch TV, then maybe all that would come true. <laughs> great show, Rob. Great show, Lou. Oh, next. Great show, guys. I like watching you. You guys are fun. Bye like forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know I lasted, but Matt, no. your It's not goodbye, it's farewell. Oh, farewell. Matt. <laughs> I'm wondering why someone didn't bring it up. You brought stuff too. I did, because I want people to eat it, right?